All right, Coach Stutzman. And first things first, uh, welcome back. I talked to you. Last time you and I actually talked was like the day you guys got canceled for the NCAA tournament, right? Was yeah, that, a lot, about 12 weeks ago. So 12, it seems 12 like. weeks ago, the beginning of March. Um, yes. I know things have been crazy. They've been crazy everywhere, right? Um, and, I, yeah, America 2020 is – I don't know if we could have uh, predicted this, right? Uh, not, not in a million years. You know, it, it's uh, – it, we're in a, definitely in a different time. Um, you know, and – you know, I, I guess I want to start out with is I want to rewind back to a very a much simpler time for John Stutzman. Um, I want to say it was like 2009 against West Virginia. Do you do you remember 2009 yes. West Virginia? You I got, do remember. I do lost, remember. They they were some, we lost, I believe, but it was close match, and uh, it, it it was a different time. But they they were good boys. 16-15, you guys lose a match to West Virginia. I want to say your heavyweight might might have got pinned. It was a 5-5 split. They might have beat you 17-15, whatever it was. They beat you. And I have the interview. I'm not – I don't know. We might get into that interview, actually. We might get into that a little bit because that was fun. But no, you, Don't do that. <laughs> you lost your mind, though. You lost your mind, right? You just – and, and uh, you needed to cool down. And it was right. – Jeez, oh, Pete, that's 11 years ago, right? And your guys fought hard. A man. while ago. Your guys fought hard, though. Um, one of the guys on that team. Well, I, the, the reason. Say that again, Coach. Well, the, 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 I'll, I'll go back to the beginning of the story, right? So the reason why it was so um, emotional that day. So um, my man, Frank Hickman, everybody knows him. Um, he's doing an awesome job in the world of MMA. He's in Thailand he, uh, for Hickman Brothers. He's training a bunch of MMA fighters. I mean, he's really doing a great job. So in December, Frank Hickman is 19 and three. In December, he's doing a really good job. He's working out two, three times a day, and he's a redshirt freshman. We had a really good young team at that time. I mean, those guys were starting to come on, and and um, and uh, so, but Frank Hickman and I always tell the story. He he kind of he kind of fell in love for a little bit. And uh, I, I, I hope he uh, remembers this story as, as clear, clearly as I do. But uh, so I started working out twice a day to keep his weight down. You know, he started working out one and a half times a day. You know, and then he started working out one time a day to, and his weight was just not where it needed to be. So then we get to, um, it's actually a good story. So then we, so then uh, we're, we're, we're coming up to University of Buffalo that, that year. And then we're getting ready to wrestle. And uh, he quits. I mean, he just literally, we're at the hotel. He quits. He runs away. We get him back, you know, and, and take him back to Buffalo. And then we get him to um, Southern Scuffle. Well, he's supposed to go back to 141 for the Southern Scuffle. Doesn't do it. And, uh, and um, so he, go, he comes to me and goes, I'm just wrestling 49. And if you know Frank, you know, I've been buddies with him since he was in fourth grade it seems like you know and uh so we we've had some words and then we're going back and forth his dad's going back and forth with them and so a southern scuffle he goes down there he's unseated and i'm like frank you're a 41 pounder you know and, and i'm i'm literally me and scott Owen we're like you're a 41 pounder you know and, and we're we're talking to him and he goes well i'm wrestling 49 you can't stop me so we get down to the southern scuffle and we're like, all right, you're going to do it your way. Do it your way. You know, and, and, and it goes, so he, first round, he gets tech fall. You know, and, and if you know me, I'm like, he comes off the mat. I'm like, oh, I told you, you're a 41 pounder. You know, second match, he wins. We're like, yeah, we're, you know, we're, you know, third match, he wins. Fourth match, he wins. He wins six straight. <laughs> Now the guys in the top six at the Southern Scuffle at 149, we're like, holy cow, what do we do? Because we got Josh Rosa at the time who's, who's ranked in the top 20 in the country. And, and, and he was in the top 12 at the Southern Scuffle at that time too. And we had Matt Bully above him. I mean, we had some hammers, Ricky Schmelian, you know. So, so anyway, he gets top six at the Southern Scuffle. He kind of winks at me, looks over at me and winks at me. You know, the, the little smart ass that he was, and he always was, you know. And, 
So anyway, we get back to Bloom. He's like, we, we, we convince him, hey, you can still go back to 41 in time. You can start making by West Virginia, I think it was at the time. So we, we're getting ready to go to West Virginia, and, 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 and we had a team to beat them. I mean, we, we were good. They, you know, they, they were missing some guys, and, and we knew it was going to be a tough match, tight match. And 41 was a key match for us. So we're getting on the bus. His dad's driving over from Wilmington, North Carolina, to, to meet the team and hang out with the team and all that good stuff. So his dad goes, so I get a phone call. He goes, he goes, is, is such and such my backup? And I go, yeah, why? He goes, use them. And he didn't get on the bus. And we went and we lost that dual meet at one point. And, and he was picked the tech fall pin the guy. So there was a lot of motion going up through in, into that dual meet. Why, why it, it you know things were said and things like that. But the, the thing with that group is nothing was ever personal. You know, everything was always, it was always in, they, they, they were just a good group of kids. So you had, you know, just there's a West Virginia story for you. Yeah. But the basically said, you didn't basically say, we're going to get new guys. And I was like, Oh no. Oh no. And then you're calling me, you're calling me. Hey, we got to <laughs> talk again. We got to talk again. And we talked again and you're, you, you cooled down. Right. That's why yeah. I don't think people understand that. That's why we need to give athletes and coaches like a cool down. Um, but the other right. thing is, uh, with I know with Martin Floriani, his big thing was like get him right off the mat, get him right afterwards because he like right. all the emotions of it, right? And and um, right, I, I, which is, I, John, I know that's what you love about it, man. You you love the emotions of it. You like how it makes you feel, and um, you know obviously that's what the the American consumer likes they want to see a fiery emotional interview or speech by someone you know what I mean but um right coach you know with Bloomsburg you had did you have two and a half or three and a half scholar what were your scholarship situation at Bloomsburg we had three and a half scholarships at the time okay and I remember your big line and, and, and we <laughs> just had a group of kids. yeah yeah I gave that guy a ham sandwich to come Russell here it was the big line you always told me like you had guys on very little money who won the EWL, qualified for NCAA tournaments, all Americans. It was it was crazy what you were able to do at Bloomsburg with very little. Um, how were you able to do with, with with three and a half scholarships? How were you able to be competitive like you guys were? Well, it was a different time, you know. Um, I, I really think this. I think Bloomsburg's a great place. I think uh, I think those state schools in Pennsylvania, Edinburgh, the Clarion, the Lock Cave, and the Bloomsburg. I think they're I think they're special places. I think those places just traditionally they can do it. Um, you don't need a big budget to win there. You know, um, you are the premier team on campus, being the only Division One team. So I think you have a niche. But I also think that when we were when we were there, we had an unbelievable, unbelievable group of guys, and and uh, we had the the Frank Hickmans, the, the Nate Grams, the um, Tony Curtos, the Mike Sees, the Mike Spades, who was my first All American. Mike Spades, my first All American, was on five thousand dollars. That was it. That was, but that was the most we were giving out at the time, you know. And and then Matt Moley was another All American for me on five thousand dollars. You know, the 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 beauty about that team and and they were special. They all sacrificed something, you know. They 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 sacrificed something to be to 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 be great. And 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 I and I, I got a lot of respect for those teams. You know, those, those guys. I, I texted those guys probably two three weeks ago, just thanking them for the time they 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 gave us at Bloomsburg University. Um, they, they were special and, 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 you know, and, and you'll, I don't know if they'll ever see a team like that again. I told those guys who I was in the hospital the other day with Mike Ticino and um, I told those guys, man, they need to get together once a year because what they did, I don't know if they will ever do it again. And uh, it's just a very special time in Bloomsburg wrestling history. You know, they, they did some things that I don't know can be duplicated. And, and, and I'll tell you what, we had a great sports staff. Scott Owen was unbelievable. You know, Scott Owen was a – he was a machine, man. That guy was my right-hand man at the time. And then we had Carl Fraunhofer with me. You know, I had uh, Mark Harwood, Danny Song. You know, I had some, I had some really good guys with me that, that understood me and, and just really knew how to push, push my buttons the right way and, 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 and you know, and, and keep my emotions in check. And, and, and so, so those guys were awesome. So coming up here, obviously um... – you know, you have to do it. You mentioned it last week. You were in the hospital with those guys talking to them. But 
you got to do something that nobody ever wants to do. Um, you know, one of your guys, um, Mike Decino, was recently uh, in a car accident. And the way you explained it to me was, was crazy. He was in two car accidents, actually. And, and um, Mike, yes. uh, he, was, he was hit. The way you explained it to me is he was hit. He got out to check his car, and then somebody came by and hit him, hit him again. And then I believe that's the way it was. That's the way it was explained to me. Um, I, I hope I'm getting it right. I don't want to put false, you know, fake news out there, so to speak. But uh, I, 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 that's the way it was explained to me. And, and, and I hope I'm, you know, relaying that message the right way. He was then in the hospital for how long, uh, John? So he went to Geisinger Medical Center originally. And then they airlifted him to Lehigh Valley Hospital. He was in there probably, I'd say, 24 hours, 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer um, before he passed. And they were able to, to harvest all of Mike Decino's organs. Is that correct, John? No, no, yes, I think that's what they were waiting for. You know, um, I, his, his lungs were good. His heart was good, I believe his kidneys, his livers, um, you know, his liver, I should say, all, everything was good intact. And, and that's what they were, that's what they were doing. They were trying to harvest his, uh, his organs so he can, you know, be a, a transplant. So that, you know, in death, he saves probably five, six lives, right? Um, that guy, you Absolutely. know, that guy just a hard nosed guy. And he's like what you epitomize with these just real blue collar guys who weren't doing it for money. They were doing it because they loved wrestling and they were, they were hard nosed and that was the culture, right? Um, what's your finest that, memory? That was you clearly know? the culture. I'll tell you what, I was just thinking about this the other day. Um, I don't know if people realize this, but um, so his first time going to the national tournament, he had to win the EWLs and uh, we beat the West Virginia kid in the finals to, uh, to, to go to the national tournaments that year. Um, it was the, the kid out of Delaware that went to Oklahoma State. Um, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Mead. Went to Oklahoma State originally, Mead. then transferred to West. Mead. Who's that? Was it Mead? Yes, yes, Alex Mead. Yep, Alex Mead. So we we beat him in the finals of the EWL to go to the national tournament, and uh, and I th I believe that was in Philadelphia. I think that his first national tournament was in Philadelphia. I believe I could be wrong, but I I, I think it was um, him and Frank Hapen qualified that year for us, and. Uh, so that, that was my best memory for him. One of my, one of my strongest memories, he had to win the tournament and uh, he did, you know, and, um, and he beat a guy that, that very talented kid, you know, um, and you know, everybody knows Alex to me was very talented. So um, I think we beat him like three, two or an overtime, a typical Mike, this, you know, fashion beat him in overtime or, or we wrote him out or something crazy, but uh, what, what, a, what an unbelievable match. What do you say to all of his teammates and, and, and his family? You know, you're going to speak uh, coming up at a, at a service for him. What do you say to them, and how do you, how do you memorialize someone like that and celebrate his life? Well, I, there, there's a couple ways I, I think we got to look at this. I think first we got to address his mom and dad because I think they did a phenomenal job of raising a, a young man. Those guys, they, they, he was one of the best guys and, and you say that about a lot of kids, but, but he was a good kid and lived a great lifestyle, loyal, um, kind, you know, but he was tenacious on the mat, you know. Um, so, you know, his mom and dad did an unbelievable job of raising him and, 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 and just guiding him along, you know. Uh, his high school coach, man, it, I didn't have to do a lot with Mike, you know. Uh, his high school coach did an unbelievable job of just, you know, just instilling the work ethic and, and, and you know, just – just instill what, what, what it was about to be a division one wrestler. And then his teammates, I told these guys this, they were a special group of guys and, and I love every one of those guys. And um, so, so, but in, in regards to Mike Decino, um, warrior, tough, tenacious, um, just an ultra competitive kid. We used to call him Captain Caveman. You ever watch that cartoon back in the day with the, uh, the guy had the stick, you know, Captain Caveman. Well, that was Mike. You know, he was just a caveman through and through and, and just an unbelievable, unbelievable young man. Um, you know, and his wife, you know, she used to 
she used to make my coffee runs when her mom, her grandfather, her dad, uh, her little brother used to make my coffee runs probably like every day. They'd come up in the office and get, give me coffee or come to every wrestle match or come to club and um, watch my kids, you know. So it, it's, it's been a really tough situation for, for myself, my wife, the athletes. But I think at the end of the day, I think the one thing that with Mike, I think um, he gave everybody his best. And, uh, and, and I, I really believe that, uh, you know, that, that there's something special going to be for, for his family down the line. Now, his wife is uh, pregnant with a son. She's due, I think you said September, right? Yeah, correct. And that's a really supportive community. And she, she is from Bloomsburg, right? She's from Bloomsburg. So she's in the town she grew up in, the high school she went to. She does have a big support network there, right? Yes, her 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 mom, um, her 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 mom still lives there. Her her father is living there, and it's an unfortunate thing because her father's battling cancer at the same time right now. You know, so so they they've been through a lot, but they have an unbelievable uh, family. You know, and 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 she has a great friends in the town. Um, that that Bloomsburg wrestling community, they're going to take care of her. They're going to, you know, I, I'm I'm a firm believer in those guys and that team. They're going to continue reaching out to her and, and just being a strong support staff for her, along with her mom and her brother, you know, and and her little sister. She has a she also has a little sister. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's a strong community. I I think she's going to be, you know, it's going to be some tough times, but I think she's going to, you know, she's going to thrive. She's going to she's going to she's 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 a tough gal. So I'm going to go give to the um, – they have a GoFundMe page, and they've raised over $90,000. The goal is 100 I'm actually going to give that to, to that today. But, Coach, um, you're in the relationship business, right? So you had to build – you have to recruit this person, convince this person to come to Bloomsburg, now Buffalo, where you're at. You can see the, the UV on your shirt. Um, but you're in the relationship business. So you're talking to these kids when their brains are still developing. They're in the, they're in the formative – um, educational process of their life so you're talking to them when they're now even earlier right because you can have text and email conversations even earlier yeah the relationship business what's it like to essentially watch a kid become a boy into a man under under your tutelage and you know their parents are charging you with a big part of their educational process their process of becoming leaving boy things like what Hickman did, irresponsible boy things, to becoming a man, right? You don't quit on your teammates, things like that. Do the right thing. Go to your workouts. Go to classes. You're responsible for so much. What's it like being in the relationship business? And now, you know, you have a guy who you watch become a boy to a man, and ultimately he's a man. He's working and, you know, untimely passing. What's this whole – what's it like watching this whole process? First off, it goes super fast. I think we can all agree on that. Life does. Yeah. And but what's what's this process been like for you? This relationship process, recruiting, training the athlete, and then watching them go out and become a man, have a family, things like that. What's that been like for you? Well, it, it's it's been it's been it's been unique, right? I mean, we get in a, and, and and I've been at fault with this too. You know, is is we we focus so much on winning and losing all the time. You know, I, I think, uh, and I had to take a step back a little bit and kind of figure out, figure out it's not all about winning and losing sometimes, right? Um, but at the end of the day, it's uh, the, you know, it, it's 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 fun watching the Frank Hickmans of the world, the um, the Brian Lantries of the world, the um, Jason Estevez of the world, you know, um, just kind of coming in a program and just, you know, and just kind of, developing and, and getting good jobs here today graduate and, and the Jake Gunnings of the world and and you know just watching a lot of these guys just 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 do well with their lives and 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 the thing about it is you never know which what you never know when something's going to be taken from you you know and, and and I think what I've learned from the last week and into this quarantine and and everything like that is that that you better and, 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 and like I said, I'll start, I'll probably start getting away from myself a little bit, like just worrying about winning and losing all the time. But, but man, you better, you better love what you got and, and you better take advantage of your opportunities you have. And, 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 and you better, you know, 
you know, just do 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 the best you can with, with what you got, and 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 not bitch and complain, so to speak. You know, and and, and I think that's where we're at. You know, I, I it's been a tough time for my my wife, my myself, um, and and, and those other guys. But the Mike Decinos of the world make it worth it, man. The Josh Rosa, Josh Rosa just got a head job. Another one of my athletes just got a head job. You know, so just watching those guys progress, man. I'm super proud of these these guys that I've I've coached. They don't know it, you know. I don't show my emotions, you know, my a lot with with people, you know. But uh, I can tell you this: I love every one of my athletes. I always did, um, you know. And I wish not, you know. I wish not everybody the best. I was told this the other day. I let you go. The, I was talking to women's basketball coach. She said, "People will never know how much you care until they're about 24, 25, 26 years old." That's what she told me, and I believe it, you know, because we push so hard when they're younger. You know, we want to win championships. We want to do this. We want to do that. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they're not ready to win a championship. Maybe, you know, and, you know, so, you know, so it, 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 it's, a, it, it, it's been unique, you know, and, and let's give a shout out to Rich Perry. How about, you know, two years ago, you know, he had his bad accident. So it, it's been a challenge the last couple of years, so to speak. How do you find, how do you I don't know, know if I answered the question? No, you did. You did. What's it like? Um, you know, uh, when you're in a situation and, and you, how, how do you know you're recruiting a kid, you're sitting across from him or you're talking to him on the phone or now it's texting and emailing. How do you know when someone's a Stutzman guy? How do you know that? You don't, you know, you, it, it's hard, you know, because um, they all want to be, you know, they all want to be They They, they, and, and I think anybody can be. You know, I, I just, you know, how I grew up, you know, I, I just think that um, work ethic's king, you know, and, and I'm not saying I, I won every single match because I didn't. I'm not saying I was the hardest worker guy, but I, I thought I worked pretty hard. And, you know, and I just want guys like that. You know, I want guys who love to be around my wife and kids. I want guys who like to be around the wrestling room, you know. And I, I probably got to do a better job with that moving forward, you know, just, just looking for the right kid. But... I take chances on kids because I believe that everybody deserves a chance, you know, and, and, and if you're willing to do what it takes academically and socially, you know, then, then you're going to be successful, you know? So, um, you know, that, that's my message, you know, I mean, university of Buffalo is a great place, you know, and, uh, and um, you know, if, if you're our type of guy, then, then you're our type of guy, you know, but Evan Ramos, unbelievable recruiter. He just really knocked out the ballpark with this recruiting cycle. Excuse me, you know, Justin Oliver is doing well. He's coming on, you know, Muhammad McBride. Those guys, Troy Keller staying on staff. Those guys are awesome guys, and, and uh, you know, they're, they're doing great. But Troy Keller is a, is a, is a unique individual. <laughs> so. You bring – you have uh, Muhammad McBride. His story is like a crazy story, Right. Muhammad McBride yep. won University Nationals. He represented the United States of America in the World Championships, right? Um, yes, yes. Muhammad McBride had this, like, uh, they changed the, the beard, the beard thing. He was a big part of the beard thing getting changed, right? Yep. Because uh, Muhammad – He was the did, reason because uh, – yeah, Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, he, he, he was the reason. So – uh, the story goes as this. So his freshman year, he only got about six matches in and they, and they didn't give him a red shirt for it. You know, uh, and she didn't, they gave him a, because he had the beard, he wouldn't shave it. And I didn't understand. I'm like, Hey, shave it. You know, he's like, listen, my faith. And I'm like, you know, and I'm looking at, I'm looking at, you know, I've been to Dagestan. I've been to Chechnya. I've been to, you know, predominantly Muslim countries. I'm like, well, not everybody has a beard. You know what I mean? So, um, and, and we had these conversations and, and he just, he's hold true to his belief, you know? And, and so, so the next year he had it again and then um, he was wearing a mask the whole time. So he couldn't breathe. Like he had this mask on, he hyperventilates. So everybody think he was out of shape. He just couldn't breathe. He had this mask on. And, and then his third year, I'll never forget it. So we found this covering. Right. And, and it was in a magazine, you at wrestling USA magazine. And it said NCA approved or whatever for the hair, for the hair thing. Well, we're at Eastern Michigan university and we're wrestling. Somebody told on us because he had a, 
he had a, a, a beard covering on. Somebody reported us to the NCA and turned us in for a rules violation because Muhammad wore a beard. And then after that, that's the reason why it changed. So he was the reason why it changed, to be quite honest with you. He was the, um, you know, he was the, he was the catalyst for that. And he's, it's, he's, he's a Muslim. It's faith-based. And it's like, dude, it's America. Yeah. You really can't yeah. discriminate against somebody based on if they're wearing a beard because of their religion. It's like literally the cornerstone of America, yeah. right? Like, am I wrong? <laughs> yeah. And hold on, hold on. I won't get too close. It's a stupid rule anyway. Let's just go with that. It was a stupid rule anyway. Yeah. Can you give me that? <laughs> yes. Yes. Dumb. That was rule in the book. Dumbest rule in the book. Um, that's like okay, and, and it and it does nothing for you. No, it would be like like it would be like if we were shaving, like, ah, shaving actually hurts you. No, yeah, it, it breaks because it breaks your skin down, right? Yes, yes. I mean, look, I know I'm yeah. clearly a health yeah. expert. Come on, look, <laughs> John. I want you to think about this. The, the, exactly. the greatest freestyle guy I ever do it, Buvisor Saitia. Most of the time, what's he have? He has a what? Yeah. His beard. So we would beard. be, we would be, all of that greatness would have been stolen from us because we wanted this guy to shave. Come on. It's absurd. It's absurd. It's, it's absurd. <laughs> I like watching it now when the guys are, exactly. when they're, when they got a beard and they're, they're out there wrestling, right? I like right. it. I think it's cool. I like, I'm into it. So I, hey. well, I think it's funny. I think, I think it's funny. You can, you can pull up basketball events, football events, and these dudes got beards down here. But we're different. We got to be we, we got to be bigger and better than everybody. And I understand that, you know. But at the end of the day, there's got to be some common sense. Yeah. Well, and I, the whole thing is it gives a rash. I understand that. that I get where they're coming. It gives a beard rash, right? right? That, that's like the premise of it. It's a right. dumb rule, though. I, I don't care. I, I don't care. Um, right. they don't make the UFC guys <laughs> don't have to shave. You know what I mean? Like, and then the right. hair thing. That's an. I mean, it yeah. just. I, yeah. It's like, what do we do? What more can we do to stifle personality and stifle individuality? I just, yeah, I'm not a fan, as you can tell. So, okay. Right. So, so John, right. business and recruiting, <laughs> you're a hard-nosed guy. You get a guy like a Muhammad McBride. He's stuck with you. He's listened to everything you've ever said. He came in. He, I don't even know how much. What, what, yeah. You ever make the state tournament even? Like, he was just hard-nosed and works hard, yeah, right? He never rests with it. Never wrestled a day in his life in high school or middle school. Muhammad McBride? Never wrestled a match. What? Never wrestled in high school. So so he would go. We had this, we our wrestling club, the Cobra Wrestling Academy and, and the Bulls Wrestling Club. So he would just go to these different practices every every day. And he would go to some tournament, he would go to tournaments in the offseason and stuff like that, but never wrestled for UB was his first organized team he's ever wrestled for. And they only gave him three years. So was he so, there before you? Tell me how that was. Was he there before you? No, he came his first year. His first year. So we came in together. Got it. Okay. He didn't wrestle at all in high school. His dad. No. Nope. His father. So his father, I've known his father since 1992, 93. I've, I've known, uh, I know Mustafa for a long, long time. So the story goes is that when he tried to, he was coming in, he was, he was homeschooled and he, and he was at ECC at the same time. So as he graduated high school, he got his two year degree at the same time. Mustafa did. So the NCA, the NCA. Yeah. No, Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad. Muhammad. Sorry okay. about that. So when he was, yeah, so that's, so when he graduated high school, he was 15 years old, 15. Muhammad, and he had his two-year degree at 15 years old. Muhammad was 15. Yes. So he's like highly intelligent. That's what I got. He's highly intelligent. How old is Muhammad now? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say Muhammad is a worker. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I I think he's smart. I don't, I don't, I think he's very smart, but I think he works. Yeah. Doesn't accept anything less than an A. He's that kid. 
how did you build a relationship with Mustafa? What was the relationship with Muhammad and Mustafa? Uh, so just over the years, you know, like, um, I, so when he wrestled at UB, his, his dad wrestled at UB probably 92, 93. And, uh, and I was coming in 95, I believe it was. And um, he was just around the program, Got it. you know, and, Got and, it. and we're just a lot of similarities, you know, um, just a lot of similarities, a lot of common friends, you know, and, and then, and then I, then when I went away to Bloomsburg, I, you know, I would, I would go to a club or, or come back up here and do some uh, camps and clinics or, you know, show up at the Clarion Open where there's this 14 year old kid wrestling. Well, that was Muhammad. So Mustafa would take him around to all these open tournaments because people never believed his age. People never really believed that he was 14, 15 years old. They never believed it, you know, but, but, um, he was, <laughs> and uh, and I got a really good relationship with Maha, uh, Mustafa. Unbelievable guy. Um, comes in the restroom, room, hangs out. You know, just a, a really good guy. So you know, like I talk about the relationship aspect of things. Um, how important is it, John, that you don't like discount somebody or like? There's people wrestling have. There's crazy people in wrestling. There's all these people, but you never know when somebody's going to have a way they can help you, a connection they can make with somebody else, or. Your kid can wrestle for you. How important is it to treat everybody right. with like respect and and you know because you don't know if Mustafa's kid's gonna ever, you, you don't know if he's ever gonna produce for you. Or, but like right. how, like how do you have the foresight to keep everybody within arm's length of you? Yeah, um, you don't. I mean, it's just. I mean, it, it's hard. You know. I mean, I made a lot of mistakes in my life, and and you know, and. and I, I just hope I just you know you just learn and live and learn from them. Um, I had a lot of great mentors. You know, I always say Dave Grant was he was really good at uh, teaching me how to run a program. Uh, Jim Beekner was a very relationship based guy, so I, I was around those guys. Dan Wernsberger, unbelievable technician. You know, so I've been blessed and lucky enough to be around some really good guys. Um, but you know. Uh, I don't know. It, 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 it's a challenge for, it's a challenge when you're in the heat of the battle, right? You don't want to, you don't want to make people mad at you. you. You want people to like you, you know? Um, but uh, it's a fine line of trying to get something out of a guy and keeping guys on, you know, on course. Where do you guys think, you know, at Buffalo, I remember I was on the mat actually, um, the round of 12 match for, I think it was Landry. Was it Landry, the round of 12? Yeah. Against Lehigh? Yeah. Against Lehigh? Yes. Overtime, we lost. Yeah. Overtime, but you guys had it. You had him. He had him. Yeah. Was, it, was it Brown from Lehigh? Is that who it was? Am I right? Um, um, I, mean, I forget. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm drawing yeah, a blank right it. now. I, I, right? Lehigh guy. I just, I, I'll never forget it. So I'm on the mat, and I remember walking back with you. And it was just like, dude, you're, I remember saying to you, hey, man, you're doing all the right stuff. Your guys are doing all the right stuff, right? But media, coaches, yeah. other coaches, athletes, everything, uh, we're only worried about one thing, and you even said this. We're too focused on winning, right? We're so, so all, you're ultra hyper competitive. Yeah. We're so worried about winning. But, like, you know you're doing the right things. Your guy's right there. But you haven't had an All-American at Buffalo yet. Right. right? You guys are an incredible yeah. – it's an incredible research institute, one of the best schools in the country. It's hard to get guys in. Um, you know you're doing the right stuff. Right. At, at what point, you know, on this year, you don't even have a chance to get guys to be All-Americans and get them on the podium, right? What do you – at what point right. you just, hey, we got to stay the course. We're doing the right stuff. You've changed the culture completely. At what point do you – does it just does it, it doesn't happen to you? Hey man, we're doing the right things, whether we're having all Americans or not. You you had all Americans at Bloomsburg, you've done it, you know. But what point do you guys turn the corner? Right. You know, I'll, I'll say this. I say um the being an NTL American today is probably one of the hardest things in the country to do. I mean, it's you have you got the 33 of the best guys going to the tournament. There's no 
that you know that there's no easy matches anymore you know so so that tournament the way it's seated too when you're seated in the top 33 guys you're not going to have a lot it, it's going to be hard to punch a you know a uh, uh, um, that that guy's ranked 24th. He's gonna be hard to get punched through because just the way the seating set up now. Before, when you see top 12, top 16, you could fall in the cracks and you could slide through, and you know. And now, now it's different, you know. But we're going to stay the course. Um, I know what we're doing is right. I like I said, I've been around a lot of good people. Um, they did it. They they've had national champs, all Americans. You know, they, you know. Let's let's be honest, man. We put five guys on the world team since I've been here. That's not easy to do. You know, Nate Rose wrestled for Trinidad Tobago. Uh, Nolan Terrence wrestled for Canada. Alex Smythe wrestled for USA. Muhammad wrestled for um, for USA. We had Lars wrestle, got fifth in uh, junior, sorry, senior Europeans um, this year. You know, we we've had guys at the highest level. You know, now we got we do got to punch them through. But at the end of the day, we're doing the right things academically. We're doing the right thing socially. Our kids are living pretty good lifestyles. Not saying they're not knuckleheads and going out and having a good time. I'm not stupid, you know. I'm never going to tell you that. But uh, they're doing a good job. And, and at the end of the day, I want all Americans. I want national champions. I think we got the staff to put them there. If I left UB today, it's in a, the, the program's in a really, really solid position. We got great alumni support. We got um, – Academically, it's APR is really solid. We got great kids in and out of the program. We got great support administratively. And that started with Jim Beekner, not just me. But um, so, like I said, if I left today, I think this program is set up to be successful for the next 20 years. Do you think media coaches, yourself, me, everybody, do you think we're too focused on the you got to have all Americans? Do you feel like that's almost like a curse we have? Yeah, because, I mean, think about this, right? We we lost our season. We lost our season, right? How many All-Americans did we have this year? Zero. Think about it. None. Yeah. Yeah, we had the NWCA, you know, you know, honorable mention, all that good stuff, and that's awesome, right? But but we lost our season, and, and, and what do you put an asterisk next to those guys that were ranked number one in the country going in or the first or guys who could have been a first time All-American? Troy Keller would have been an All-American this year. I'm just telling you. That dude was wrestling as well as anybody. And I hurt for him. Derek Spann was started to wrestle again, you know. So I really thought those guys were set up to be All-Americans, you know. Um, I, I, I'm a dual meet guy. I think we got to put some more ownership in dual meets. Dual meets have to matter more than an individual tournament. That's why lacrosse is growing. That's why football grows. That's why all these team sports grow, because team matters. And uh, and I'm a do me guy. So to answer that question, yeah, I, I, it's we got to be more about the do me. Um, you know, so we're got to be more about the do me. But here's the other thing, John. We're big. We're in big trouble. Mid majors are in big trouble. Big Ten's not in big trouble. EIWA schools, for the most part, not really right. in big trouble, right? Um, I mean, here's right. what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. Which Ivy League school just dropped teams? What Ivy League school just dropped? Brown dropped 11. Yes! And and what's Brown? Brown dropped 11 teams. They're, they're top 10 with endowment. Brown's top 10 in the world with endowment. Right. You don't need to do that. Yep. You don't need to do it. Olympic sports are in trouble. We saw what Central Michigan University did yesterday with their athletic department, getting the waiver to drop below the 16th. Right, John? Um, yeah. Wrestling's in yeah. trouble. Wrestling's in trouble. They're cutting stuff. I know Kent State's cutting some stuff. Not, not, not saying they're cutting the program, but I know that those two, school, those two teams right, right there, they're in your conference. They're cutting stuff. Um, I yeah. know Matt Hills, all the, he's fighting a lot of battles because – even before COVID-19, Edinburgh was on a big, you know, they were on a decline with, with enrollment, right? So we're all fighting these battles, John. Everybody in, in, in the mid-major is fighting these battles. Now, look, I don't even know, is, is Appalachian State going to uh, replace Roos's job? You know what I mean? Like, we don't know these things, right? They're right. furloughing third coaches, right? right? They're furloughing and or just cutting third yes. coaches. So we're, we're in this battle right now. We're in a battle. 
obviously there's a virus out there that's killed over 100,000 Americans. Um, so we're in a battle right now. We're in a battle, not just financially, we're in a battle with the virus. Um, we've got um, a battle with racism right now. We've got, it, it, it's, John, it's, there's madness in this country right now. How does wrestling survive? Yes. Big question. How does wrestling survive? Well, I, 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 I think we can't be, uh, we cannot be individuals. I can tell you that. You, you, you got to be together to survive. But the problem with wrestling, we cannibalize ourselves. You know, we, you know, everybody thinks, like you said it, you got to be an All-American. You got to be a national champion. You got to be in a top 20 in a pro. Everybody says you got, oh, you're a top 20 team. You know, right? Everybody's talked about, ah, oh, West Virginia should be top 20 every year. West Virginia could be top 10. Well, well, Buffalo should be top 20. Buffalo, well, if you're top 20, who's last? You know, the, and, 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 and we got great coaches out there. So, I, I, you know, personally, I, I think we got to do things together. You know, we got we to gotta do what's best for the, the sport. And we got to get – and I think we got great leadership, you know, in NWCA and, 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 and most administrations, you know. But, and it's not all about money. You know, I, you don't need a lot to have a wrestling program. Five hundred thousand dollars, you can have a successful wrestling program. That's nothing, you know. Everybody talks about endowments, right? Well, how do you endow? In order to endow a program, you need twenty-four million dollars. <laughs> Think about that. To endow a program, you need twenty-four million, right? So there's my dog. I'm trying to give it away. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> um, uh, but it, it's. I, I just think we got to be smarter. You know, we, we got to communicate more. We got to, we got to, you know, okay, here, here it is. We always ask the big programs, the Iowa's, the Penn States, the Oklahoma States, what do they want? Their programs are solid. Ask the little program what we need. And that's how you're going to, that's how you're going to sustain wrestling. It's the little program, just the, it's the less funded program, just the mid-major program. We're the ones who, who keep the sport alive. You're going to have the Big Ten. You're going to have the Big 12 teams, the EIWA teams. But it's the Buffaloes, the Kent States, the Central Michigans, the Ohios, the Gardner Webbs, the George, Ma George Masons. It's about it's, – it's, yeah, that, that's what I think. I don't know John, if that makes sense. John, how close are we – we wrestling, we division one college wrestling. How close are we to being men's gymnastics? I'm gonna be optimistic. I'm gonna say not close, but my realism, you know, being realistic, being realistic, man, it, it's um I'm hoping not. I, I I can see it, you know what I mean? I I see some things happening. Uh with you know, with scholarships being cut being cut and and programs being cut i see it happening you know but but i i'm, I'm hoping it doesn't you know that that situation what are they they sitting at under 30 teams and the the major is that, all, yeah 21 right yeah yeah they're under 30 teams but they're and they're sitting at and it's all the majors the schools that have massive budgets with football that have it you don't I don't even think you have right. like those fringe teams. You don't have like a, you don't even have like a, a Davidson who has it, right? You don't, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't have like a, right. not like a fringe right. thing where you have a Sacred Heart that has it, or or a, even a Buffalo that has it, or no team in the MAC has it. Men, right. do they? Does any team in the MAC have right. men? Right. I don't think so. No, I've never heard of it. If it does, no, no, that I don't believe they do. Uh, Jen. So, so when we talk about that, we cannibalize ourselves. You know, we're all worried about what Penn State, Iowa, uh, you know, what uh, Ohio State. We're worried about what they're doing. We're, we're almost catering the needs to them. Right. When we need to c cater the needs to right. Stanford Hart, Buffalo, Gardner Webb, Chattanooga, Campbell, who's done a yep. who's done a fabulous job, by the way. Um, Chattanooga's yeah. done a fabulous job, by the way. They've made themselves relevant by taking the ball and running with the Southern scuffle, right? Right. Um, 
so they, they do those two programs, you know, those are two good examples of they, they've kind of evolved and, you know, they'll, hopefully they'll be one of the last men standing. And I don't want a last man right. standing scenario though, John, I don't want, I don't want a men's gymnastics right. scenario. Right. Um, what have those guys done? Just those two examples right there. Campbell, what's Campbell done? What's Chattanooga done? What have those guys done to, to keep themselves relevant and, and stay in division one and, and to continue to thrive and grow? Well, first of all, Chattanooga, you got to give a lot of credit to Heath. I mean, um, um, Enslinger, there, Coach Enslinger, right? He he did an unbelievable job with the Southern Scuffle, and and make no mistakes about it. The reason why does do we know why he had he had the Southern Scuffle? Does everybody know why? Do you remember why he had, Greensboro yeah, cut? Greensboro cut, you know, and 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 he stepped up and he brought the Southern Scuffle and. He made it a unique situation when you could – he put it on the first and second. He got it away from Midlands a little bit, right, and uh, got all the media attention. Um, and he was unbelievable with Chattanooga Strong and, you know, some other some other social media things, you know. And and, um, and I'm assuming those guys down at Compound and Fretwell and those guys, they got behind the – you know, they got behind the Southern Scuffle with sponsorship. So, you know, he's probably a big reason that program is really strong today. You know, and um, so you got to give him a lot of credit. And then you got to give Colot a lot of credit at Campbell. You know, I mean, Colot, he, he inherited the APR mess just like I did here at, at, at Buffalo. And, and, and he turned it around, you know, and, and, and it wasn't easy. So, you know, those guys, you know, and, and let's not forget administration, they probably, they want wrestling. If your administration likes wrestling, you're going to have it, you know, and, and so – no, those guys did an unbelievable job social media wise. They're really good, um, you know, and and you know, so that's, that's why I think those guys are pretty good. What's it like fighting the arms race with social media and promotion and kids putting your singlet on when they come in on recruiting trips and it's just evolving right. so quickly? What's that like fighting that battle, John? I hate it. <laughs> I, I hate it, man. I'm so. Uh, you know, we're, we do a pretty good job on social media with our Twitter. You know, uh, I, I, I think we do a good job. I think we could do better, you know, but um, I barely know how to turn the computer on, you know, to be quite honest with you. So um, it's been a challenge, you know, but, but we have a good, uh, we have ESPN inside our university that does all our matches. Right. So we have, um, we have a great external, um, you know, IT people that, that help us with all that stuff. So, but, it, but it's a challenge. You know, we had a kid come in this year and wanted to put a singlet on to commit. I'm like, all right, I had to go to equipment room and get the kid a singlet. I, the first time. I'm like, all right, I guess that's what we do. You know, so so I got to evolve. You know, I'm, 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 I'm blue collar, old school, you know, and, and I, I, I'm evolving, you know, slowly but surely. You know, like with, with all that stuff, that's like, I think Colette did an amazing job by hiring a really good person and almost like a videographer, you're, you have to hire someone to do that full time for you. I don't think a coaching staff can do that. Cause I know that, I know that like Matt Hill's doing that, right? Like Matt Hill's doing that. I know that, you know, it's like they have a lot of like Arizona state doesn't have to worry about that. Ohio state doesn't, have you ever seen the right. beyond the block O thing that they, they like, they have a, a television, an internet program that follows Sammy Sasso, that right. follows Colin Moore, that follows Gas Tank Gary, right? Like, beyond the block, oh, I think. Right, right. Like, dude, like, it's a right. – do you know how much video they're shooting? Do you understand that they're shooting right. 10 to 12 hours of video to get eight minutes? Do you realize that? And it's, it's, it's right. multiple days Crazy. Of, of work, and it's someone that you're paying a – Fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar a year salary to do, and you guys just can't do that. You know what I mean? It's it's right. a little frustrating for me. Hey, I'm not mad at Ohio State though. You use those resources if you got them. No. You know? Yes, you yes. Them. No, you can't. Once again, it all it all it all goes back to what we talked about, right? It's it's what do we need? What do our small programs need to be sustainable? You know, and we know they're going to be okay. We know Ohio State's going to be okay. We know Iowa's going to be okay. You know, we know Arizona State, you know, and, um, you know, how do we keep the University of Buffalo, Kent State, Ohio, Appalachian State, George Mason, you know, wrestling's going to thrive because of us. 
you know, and, and so we as coaching staff, we got to do this. I got to get on the horn with, with you and other people and, and kind of build our brand, you know, and, and like I said, we're not for everybody or everybody's not for me, but, um, but, it, but it's, uh, it's unique. It's just a unique time. How many, how old are your kids now, John? Cause I remember um, doing some duels for you when I had the EWL contract, your daughter was like, like a little girl, like my kids. Yep. How old is she now? Yeah. Your oldest. She's 13 going on 21. 13 going on 21. Um, it's funny. She's my clone. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. She, yeah, she, she's a really good volleyball player. So um, my, my middle daughter, she's 11. She's a really good gymnast. And then Paxton, six. And he's just a uh, – he's Paxton, man. He's a good boy. He wants to wrestle, wants to wrestle though. You know, he okay. comes to me. So, you remember Wally. He wrestles for Wally. At, yeah, he wrestles for Wally. Okay. He wrestles for Wally. Come to me. Come to me and says, Daddy, can I wrestle? I'm like, no. You know? And then uh, he's like, he wanted to wrestle. You know? So, he wants to wrestle for UB is what he says. So, we'll see. Having your family around your two programs, well, you just – Paxton you had in Buffalo. The two girls you had in Bloomsburg, right. right? And then you had him him in Buffalo. Yeah. Um, what's it like having your family around a program? You got young men who are, you know, they're developing, you know, from boys to men. And what's that relationship like having your family around a wrestling program, a D1 wrestling program, John? Well, it's great. You know, when I was at Bloom, um, my, my, you know, my wife was because of Bryce and, you know, my brother-in-law's all wrestled for me, you know, and uh, so that was a easy, that was really easy, right? As, as my wife was around, Bryce was around, my, my, my daughters were around and it was great because th those guys, um, you see a different me when I'm with my, with my kids, right? I'm, I, I'm not, you know, you'll, you'll see a different guy, you know, hopefully, you know, um, and then when we came here, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been good, right? Uh, my, 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 my daughters are growing up inside the program. Um, Paxton's growing up around the guys. He travels all their way, meets with me now, you know, so, so he's always around and, 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 and my wife's now strength coach at the university for women's basketball. And uh, so I think when you put all those things together, um, it, it just, it, it just makes things right, you know, and um you know, I'm not saying it hasn't been, hasn't had its challenges, but uh, to have my wife and kids around the program um, as we move this thing forward and, and um, it, it's, it's good. It's good for me. It's good for them. And, and it's good for the guys, you know, they, they, those guys really like my wife. They, they, they like, her. yeah, they, they, they probably, yeah. <laughs> They're afraid of her, not me. <laughs> so Bryce Hassman's your brother-in-law um, yeah. was at North Carolina. Does he still live in North Carolina, by the way? Yeah, you know what? We just um, we just went and saw him a couple weeks ago. You know, um, so we went down there and uh, we 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 went to Chapel Hill. Um, he lives down in Chapel Hill still with his wife, um, wife and three boys. So we went down there and and just kind of had a good uh, reunion, a little bit, a good good conversation. You know, it, it was it was time. You know, I, he he worked he worked here for three years, I think, and then um, then then he moved on to Chapel Hill and, and <clears throat> he was killing it down there. You know, and you know, their best guys, you know, they they were he's a good coach, man. He he's a really good coach. You know, they they were winning. You know, his eighty four pounder was a couple time all American chip ness and their ninety seven pounder went to the national tournament, you know, and then uh, their heavyweight was well and Austin O'Connor's one of his guys. He's real tight with Austin O'Connor. So so no, he did an unbelievable job down there and, and and for whatever reason he just decided family wise it was good for him to get out and and uh you know and just uh focus on his family and focused on, you know, just getting a nine to five job so he can travel with his sons, his sons wrestle, play football, basketball, baseball, whatever. And so it, it was, it was, it's good for them. John, you know, I, you and I talk a lot about um, people who stay in wrestling. And when you tell me some of the salaries, like my brain wants to explode. Um, I'm like, yeah, I would, I right. couldn't live off of hat. You know, I couldn't live, you could double that person's salary and I couldn't live off that. Right. Why do we stay in wrestling? Right. And the term I heard is, is POW, prisoner of wrestling. Don't know if you coined that or who coined that phrase, yeah. but why do we stick around wrestling so much? And if John Stutzman left wrestling, 
Is there any doubt he wouldn't be making a quarter of a million dollars a year with the amount of time, energy, and passion he could put into selling widgets or managing a company or right. whatever it may be? Why do we stick with the sport when we could go and quadruple our money? Why do we do that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the POW, I heard from Bryce a long, long time ago, you know, so if you've ever been around Bryce, he always has something crazy to say. So um, I, I heard that from him and it kind of stuck a little bit, you know. Um, why do we stay in wrestling? It's not very, I tell all the young guys, I got some young staff members right now and I tell those guys, you know, you better make sure this is what you want to do. Because when you get to 30, 34, 35, 36 years old, there's not a, you're stuck. <laughs> you know, there's not a lot, you, there's not a lot going on. You, you kind of pigeonhole yourself a little bit. You know, but um, we love it. You know, it's, I think it's just our personalities more than anything, you know, um, but it, it's, a, it's a challenge, man. I, you know, my, my, my assistant coaches had a little girl last night, I believe, and um, I'm waiting to get the news, make sure everything's healthy and, and, you know, she's healthy and all that good stuff. And, and, but I feel bad, you know, I, he makes a little bit of money, but now he has a family. So how do you keep good coaches when you, on the salaries they make, you know? So that's the challenge. Like, here, here's the thing, man. I'm a high school teacher, right? And when you tell me some of the salaries, me as a high school teacher on a 180-day yeah. contract, I make twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 more than these guys who right. are going in. They're fighting with college athletes every day. Physically, right. it happened. They got to lift. You got to stay in shape. You got to have cardio. And you've been doing this for, John, you've been doing it for 25 years as a, as a coach. Yeah. You've been on this for, when did you graduate? When, when, did, you, when did you graduate from Buffalo? 98. No, this is 25 years. 20, 25, years, 25 you've been years doing this. Think about that. Yeah, yeah I'm, 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 getting, I'm, I'm frail. I'm frail. I, I'll tell you a funny one. I grabbed one of my guys. Um, I made a bet. I grabbed one of my guys. Um, the other day, not the other day, probably before the quarantine, and I told him I was going to kick his butt, and I lasted literally probably three minutes. I got about a couple, three, four, five takedowns in three minutes, and then I was shot for the next week. I couldn't even move my body anymore, you know. But uh, it's uh, it's 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 hard, man. It's I got to do a better job of getting back in shape because you know, like I said, Paxton, I got kids, you know. So we'll see. I mean, if you grabbed a hold of Keller and tried to go with Keller, Keller could hurt you really bad. He would break every limb on my body. Ke right now. Keller's a and, killer, and dude. So it's funny, though, because I used to work out with the not tell the story. When we were at Northern Illinois, at Ben Heiser and Jay Finalist, we worked out with every day. Uh, had Lowney, Mac Champ, <laughs> Bryce, Mac Champ, and, you know, I mean, um, you know, Limp you know, Scott Owen. You know, we had, we had some hammers there, you know, and we were working out with those guys. Those guys were workers, you know, and then you got the bloom. We had Bryce again. We had George Carter, Hunter Gano, you know, you had Jimmy Bertulis. You had Tony Kirkto in a little bit, you know, I mean, Rosa Hickman, Decino. God, man, we had some hammers. Fritz Perry, and, and I was working out on a consistent basis. I, now, no, I don't even try. <laughs> when you evolve, when you evolve as a coach, or oh, let's just say you get old, body breaks down. How much yeah. better do you become as a coach? Do you think? Uh, you know what? Um, I, you know, I, I liked it when I could wrestle more. Right, uh, I was more in it. But now I'm, 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 I'm allowing my young coaches to do more. You know, I'm taking a kind of step back and, and I don't like to word, use the word CEO, you know, but I'll use it. You know, I'm letting my young coaches kind of wrestle more and, 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 and teach a little bit. You know, I think that's important to, to kind of build those guys up. So I'm kind of taking a step back and just kind of I'm, I'm looking at the whole the totality of the room now, you know, and, and I think that's helping me out. It's, it hopefully it's going to carry me to the next phase of my career. And I, like I said, I think we're going to be really good. We're going to be really good here. John, moving forward, I'm seeing restriction on, on comp competition dates, uh, regional travel, 
only flight it sounds like it's going to be that's going to be allowed for a lot of teams will be the national tournament if that's what they need to do. And I know a lot of right. people still boss out to it because it's cheaper. Um, right. where, where do we go from here as far as COVID-19, as far as will we have a season? <laughs> like, where are we at right now, Jeff? Yeah. Well, being positive, we're going to have a season. We're, we're going. You know, I mean, we have to go. Football has to go, right? And, and football is going to go one way or another. It's just a matter of when, right? Um, if football doesn't go, athletic departments are going to be in trouble. Let's just – let's just and basketball. You know, we're, we're a big basketball school. If our basketball doesn't go, we're in trouble, you know. But, but, I, but I think we're going. I think um, – I, I don't mind the regional travel. We've always traveled regionally. Uh, I, I think, once again, wrestling, you don't need a lot to be great. I mean, we go wrestle Edinburgh, Clarion, Lock Haven, Cleveland State, Kent State, Ohio, Central Michigan. We can go wrestle Rutgers like we're supposed to next year, hopefully. And um, we don't have to go far. Midlands is Chicago. So we don't have to go far. We're in a great location. You know, so I just think we just got to continue and we're going to go. It's just a matter of when. And, um, you know, so we're going. My kids are screaming upstairs. I don't know if you're here yet, but John, how much how much of this is are you gonna have to put on guys going to opens unattached? How much because your dates are going to be cut? I'm I'm hearing two thirds to half. Because what are your competition dates now? You got what 16, 18, 16. What, 16. 16. I'm hearing it's gonna go to 10 to 8, something like that, something in that. So you're gonna have to get guys matches, they're gonna have to be able to qualify. How good are the opens going to be, and how, how many opens are you going to have to sign guys to? Well, that's a catch-22. So, uh, Division two, they just went to 12 dates, right? They, they went down to 12. So, I don't think we're going to go – if if our dates are cut, we're not going to go pat. We're going to go – we're not going to go below 12 because they've already made that for Division two, right? So, why would they go Division two, 12, and then Division one, 8 to 10? But with that being said, are you still allowed to wrestle more dates in your 12? Good point. That's and, – and, and our tournaments – and here's the thing. How are you going to put 500 kids in a tournament? Yeah. You know, I think dual meets are going to be more. I think dual meets would be better now because to get your matches in, you got to go to a quad. That's you have to have dual meets. Quads, right? It's not – there's not going to be just straight up where I, I, what thing I love about wrestling. I love going to a dual right. meet. You know that. I love it because you're in and you're out. You're right. And then they're in so Kent. I, when they're in Kent, I can be at the bar drinking a beer with my friends. All the old alumni come back, hey, let's go have a beer at Ray's. Play, right? Like, that's what I love about a dual meet. Well, now it's right. going to be prize and quads, right? Some of it, yeah. So, like, um, some, you know, we're going to wrestle. When we wrestle next year, uh, Northern Illinois and Kent State, we're going to wrestle them in a quad or a try meet, right, to save, to save, to help Northern save some money, and we'll go out there and just wrestle, okay? And, and, and I think you'll see a lot of that. But there's gonna, still going to be some single duels. You know, I, I, I'm, I'll rather wrestle 15 matches or 17 matches, whatever the limit is, and have some single duels than go wrestle – you know, a bunch of quads and, and wrestle 25 times. I, I, I like the single duels also. I think they're fun. I think our, my, we got great fans here. So it, it's, it's fun for me, but yeah, it's going to be a challenge. You know, I, I'm, I'm, we're still don't know what they're going to do with the season yet. Does it go to April? Is, is, is it moving from January to April? I don't know. Yeah. I'm heard. I heard the second semester deal is what I actually heard. I'm sure obviously you're on the same calls that I hear about, like, moving it to where your guys not aren't competing with March Madness as much and and uh you know maybe going to that weekend where they have the final four and then you're not competing with the uh not competing with the national championships and all these basketball things as much right that that's a thing I've heard right I don't think it's going to happen next year to be quite honest with you like how do you do it right it's and it's not next year it's two years down the road it's it's Detroit national tournament and then it's after to that right because those those arenas are locked in for a number of years right so so how do you switch all that how do you and then and my personal belief is then you got the olympic trials 
I'm a big freestyle guy, right? So how do you take away from the Olympic trials next year? When's the Olympic trials going to be? Are they going to be in December? Are they going to be in April? Are they going to be in May? You know what I mean? So, so USA wrestling is going to have to play with that a little bit because you got Spencer Lee, Dayton Fix, you got all these college guys at Yanni, you got all these college guys that are going to be wrestling in the Olympic trials. So it, it's a little bit more complicated than people think just to move the date to April, you know? And so I don't know. I, I'm, I'm the minority here. I like the length of the season. So okay. I like getting kids on campus and practicing. Yeah, you like the grind. You're nuts. You're nutsman. How'd you get the nickname nutsman? Tell me about that. <laughs> you. <laughs> you and my man Fretwell. <laughs> yeah. He makes the shirts. You know, there's nuts uh, shirts. There's nutsman. Yeah, we, we have a couple. I gotta, I gotta get with him. I'm gonna order some here soon. Uh, John, you know, like, I, the way that I talk to you and like. You're this person who accepts everyone, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. That One you're, thousand percent. You're, you're just like a – I mean, they, they might have to work really hard and be a little twisted up here and do the, follow the John Stutzman program, like what Muhammad right. done, right? Like, like Muhammad, right. he would be my, my greatest example for you. But how do you address, like, we have all this social injustice and you have kids on your team who are from all these different backgrounds. But John Stutzman's never changed. He's been the same guy, and he's all about anybody who wants to work, right? And it's just yeah. like I could sit here and go through all the guys that you have. Uh, where's Ramos? Is, is Ramos is Puerto Rican, right? Yes. You know, and you've had guys like Rich Perry on the team, Muhammad. So you've had a lot of kids, you know, people of color on your team that you've coached. Right. How do you, you know, how do you get these guys? And how do you make them feel comfortable in a program now when, you, when you're recruiting kids who are people of color? things like that. How has John Stutz been able to make people like that feel so comfortable? Well, I'm just, I've never, I've never, I won't change. You know, I just, how I grew up, you know, it's, it's, um, I grew up in Newcastle, Delaware, you know, I was born in Wilmington, Delaware, you know, um, kind of grew up, you know, my mo mother was, I tell a story all the time. She was, I guess my stepfather was he's unbelievable, you know, but, um, single mother for, probably until I was six, seven years old, eight years old around that time. So I grew up in some hard lives. I grew up in some rough areas, you know, but I had an unbelievable sports that my grandmother, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, you know, but it wasn't easy for me. It wasn't easy for my family. I can tell you that. And, and uh, so I, I, I've never, I've never looked at race as an issue. I never, it just never, for me, it just hasn't been that way, if that makes sense. But, um, I, and I don't understand it. You know, I don't, I don't understand people thinking bad about somebody because of the color of their skin or whatever. I, I just can't, it just, I don't know. So I, I don't know if that answered the question, but I just try to be honest with people and, 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 and whether you're white, black, brown, Chinese, it doesn't matter to me, you know, to be honest with you. It, it doesn't. And uh, I love all my guys. I just had a conversation with, with a couple of my guys the other day about this. So um, open forum, talk about it. And if you got something to say, say it, and then we move forward. But you come in our wrestling room, and I tell people this all the time, it's an open forum. You can say and do, and you can talk about whatever you want. Nobody's going to judge you, you know, and, and, um, and, and I think that's important to have that dialogue. Having, having those tough conversations like that, John, you know, obviously, like I'm saying, you've got – you've recruited, coached, and you've just been around, like, a, a plethora of people, man. You know, you look at Nate Rose. You look at uh, you look at Grant. You had Grant. He was from Easton, right? Grant was from Easton. Yeah. And, Easton. And you had these guys with these just kind of like crazy backgrounds, right? It's it, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny you say that. So uh, this is this is you ever watched uh, what what Christmas show was the Land of the Misfits? Yeah, I was literally the Land of the Misfit Toys. Is that the Land of the Misfit Toys? That's it's the claymation one. Uh, is it Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Yeah, 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 yeah. So here's what I can tell you. I was thinking about this the other day because with Mike Decino and those guys, and and the guys I got now, we're the land of the misfit toys, right? If I could take all these misfit toys and create one big, one great toy, we're gonna be dynamite. Be quiet. And we did that once, and we're gonna do it again. And and that's what we are: the land of the misfit toys. Whether it's Nate Rose, whether it's Justin Grant, whether it's Brian Lantry, whether it's J uh, Jake Gunning, whether it's whoever it is, 
for the land of the misfit toys and we're going to do and we're going to be successful and i love it that you're doing it with guys just from everywhere i i think like the non-judgmental like how you just accept everybody as long as they're living how you know hey you got to live a clean life got to go to class you got to do the right things i, I that's a, like dude those are your hardcore those are your values be a good person right treat people i'm not like saying and here's the right. other thing i'm not yeah i'm not saying we don't make mistakes we all make mistakes right and 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 you got to i made mistakes i made a lot of mistakes in my life and guys make mistakes you know but you got to you got to forgive you know you got to forgive and forget and, and move on you know and 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 i think that's important that people know you care you know and, and you got to show them you care it's a different kid you've really got to show them you care more you know what's the biggest thing about your past john you know you talk about you're from delaware we've heard the hitchhiking yeah. story to fargo mm -hmm. you're kind of this dude that's lived a pretty tough life you know yeah. where you come from and just dude delaware is kind of a gritty deal it's it's a it's, yeah. it's a state it's an i-95 corridor state it's a no, a lot of people are traveling, millions of people travel through Delaware every day. Not a lot of them stay, but Delaware's, it's a tough, it's a tough sell for some people, right, John? And, and you know, yeah, it's, what about your early life makes you embrace these quote unquote land of misfit toys kids? Yeah, well, I was the misfit, you know, I, I was the, I was the misfit, man. I, I um, you know, I, I, I grew up with, with, uh, for the first six, seven, eight years of my life without a father. Right. So, um, got in trouble a lot. Um, man, I, I tell, I tell the story all the time. I, 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 I used to break into cars when I was, you know, five, six years old, steal things out, lit things on with well, the pyro, lit things on fire. I mean, I was a, I was a little hell yet, you know what I mean? And, and I kind of, I don't want to say I raised myself because my, my mother used to work 20 hours a day. She'd get up and go to work and, you know, didn't have a lot of money, you know? And so, so, I embrace that, you know, I embrace the, 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 the toughness and, and, and I lived with my, my, my aunt Lee and I lived with her a little bit growing up. I lived with my grandmother growing up until my mom got remarried to my stepdad. And then uh, he adopted me and that, and that's how my, my, my original name is John Malix. That's my original name, you know? So my stepdad adopted me when I was probably, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 years old and he adopted me and changed my name, you know? So, and then we went from Wilmington, to Newcastle, Newcastle to Bear, and then, and then I went to William Penn High School. And I remember my high school coach told me, I told him I was going to be a college coach. I think, uh, I don't know if he did or other people, but they laughed at me. They said, there's no way you're going to do it. I said, all right, you sons of bitches. You know, and, and so I was always out to prove people wrong, you know, and, and, and that's just my, my, my personality, you know, so... Um, but I got some unbelievable cousins and family members, but it hasn't, it wasn't easy, you know, looking back at it, it, it you know, I, I didn't know any different, you know, but, uh, but it wasn't easy, but, but, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It toughens you up a little bit. And, but I got great family. I got great support. And uh, my mother, my father are awesome. My, you know, my cousin, my cousins are great. So, so now it, it's, it's, it's tough. It, it was good though. It was good. I know you're big into being a dad. Um, does that make the importance of being a father since you have a dad for those first six, seven, eight years of your life, six, seven years of your life, let's say, do you, do you like take more pride in being a dad? Yeah. And, and, and now does that extend into being like almost like some of your guys' dads who maybe don't have some as well? Right. Um, yeah, I, I love, uh, yeah, I, being, I, I like being a dad. I, I did, it, it was, I'm not going to say it was easy for me. It, it wasn't always easy. You know, it's, uh, you know, I, you know, it, it's not always easy, but I like being a father. I, I think, uh, you know, one thing I'll never do is I'll never not be there for my kids, regardless of any situation. So I think that, that my upbringing, knowing that uh, I'll always be there for my kids. So, um, and as far as my guys go, that that's, you're right. That's, that's kind of, some of those guys like a Nate Rose or Justin Grant or, you know, man, that's why I'm hard on some of these guys. Right. Because I want them to make it, you know, I want them to know I care. So.
do you think that draws to you to a kid sometime when you're on the phone with them and they're like, oh, it's just mom and I or aunt and I or grandma and I. Do you think that even draws you closer to that kid, maybe a, a connection? Without a doubt. I tell everybody my story. I tell everybody how I got started in college, ra- college wrestling or just wrestling in general. Um, I, th- I think it's important. Everybody understands me and understands where I'm coming from. Um, and yeah, it, 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 it clearly makes a huge difference. You know, I, I like taking that chance on a kid. Like I said earlier today, I said taking a chance on a kid's important to me. Um, and, and I'm always going to take a chance on a kid if they show that, that they want it. But you got to want it. When you bring a lot of people in, John, what do you think the number is? Because, like, you're, you're, just, you're out there, man. You're straight up. How many people can you just feel the, the, the wind leave their sails, the air out of the balloon when you start, we're going to train hard. We're going to do the right stuff. You might not red shirt. You might be the guy. You might not be the guy. You got to fight for your position. How, what's the, what would you say the percentage is when you just feel those parents or the kid just like, this guy's not for me? I actually think that, so the issue is this, is that I, I, I give the worst recruiting spiel known to man, and I tell everybody, I said, man, I'm going to give you the worst spiel possible. You're going to get up every day, six o'clock in the morning. You're never going to go home. You're going to wrestle, you know, six, seven days a week. You're going to go to study eight hours, eight hours a week, you know, socially, social, your social life going to be non-existent. I mean, I give the worst recruiting spiel of all time. And at first, a lot of these kids are all about it. And you're right. I tell them, you know, may not red shirt. We're going to wrestle the best guy all the time, you know, and, and, and so a lot of people right away, they're all about it. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they don't realize, a lot of people don't realize what I'm talking about, you know? And then when I get them here, like holy cow man this is like groundhog's day every single day you know and, and i probably got to change a little bit with the with the times a little bit but it's groundhog's day get up at six o'clock morning every day or four days a week year round six o'clock go work out right and then um yeah it's hard <laughs> how prepared do you think guys are that can do your stuff the bloomsburg guys the buffalo guys all the guys you've coached that have done it under the john stutzman system how prepared for the life are those guys? Whatever it is, selling widgets, managing yeah. other people, digging ditches, whatever it is, how prepared for life are they if they can do what your program is for five years? They're, Jason Estevez is the best example I can give you. He did it for six. You know, and, and he texted me the other day. We, well, we talked the other day, and just we just had a good conversation, man. It's, it's like he didn't understand it, you know, four, five, six years here. He's just like, man, this – or five years here, and then he got a sixth year. So his fifth year in, he was just like, he was ready to be done. You know, and then we got him his sixth year, and he's like, he wanted to do it, right, because it meant something. He understood where I was coming from, and he, and we're talking to this day. And like I said, these guys, they probably won't understand me until they're about 25, 26 years old, right? And 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 and, and that's what he's doing now. He's understanding. Text me, see how I'm doing, you know, and, and, and it takes time. You know, like I said, I, everybody's not for me. You know, and, and that's not a bad thing, you know, and, and so, you know, I, it's, it's I, you know, like I said, I, 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 I love my team and, and, and I, regardless, I think we're going to be successful. I can hear the kids are getting rowdy there. My kids, oh. are up. my wife took off for school. Good luck. We can start, yeah, we can start winding down and I like, but, but John, is, you talk about your story. What is yeah. your story and how did you get involved with wrestling? I, got, I guess to conclude here. What is John Stutzman's story? How did he get involved in wrestling? So I was, I was, I was a little punk, right? I, I, I'd fight a lot. Like, literally, I, I'd fight probably every day or, you know, whether, whatever it was, you know. And so we moved down to Bear, and I think I was living at Bear at the time, Bear, Delaware. And, and my, cousin, uh, my, my cousin, Billy, was in uh, high school, and, um, and uh, he was um, – at the time, there was, there was Jeff Del Capagni, there was Marvin Dooley, John Massey, Wayne Penn was really good, man. We had they, they were multiple-time state champs. Jack Holloway was the head coach. Just an unbelievable time in 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 Wayne Penn history wrestling, and and they did this Saturday morning clinic all the time. And I was in sixth grade, and and he literally made me go. And I'll never forget. I had Converse sneakers on. I had Dr. J Converse sneakers on because I thought I was going to be an NBA player, right? I I, I thought I was. I, you know, I thought I was the man, you know, I, I probably had fat or suede pumas with the fat laces. You remember those things, right? 
you know, so I was a little, I was a little punk, a little, you know, and, uh, you know, so he made me come and then, uh, I didn't like it. I mean, I liked it, but I, I didn't go back. And then the following year, my middle school team had, 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 my middle school had a wrestling team and all my buddies wrestled because they were the cool kids, you know, and, and I showed up at seventh grade and, and then, uh, I loved it, man. I, and then at that time, the, Bear. I showed up, I showed up at, you know, and, and I, and that was it. In seventh grade, I made the, I made the commitment that I was going to wrestle in college and I was going to be a coach in seventh grade. No matter all my, no matter what anybody ever said, I was going to do it. And the, the, the funny story about that is my daughter's the same way. She's in seventh grade. And she wants to go to the University of Nebraska for volleyball. And if you talk to her about it, she's built like me. She's, she, she, her mind's like that. She wants to do volleyball at the highest level, you know, and, and, and she's a hard worker at it. So, um, you know, so I get to high school and, you know, and, and I had to cut a ton of weight to make the team in Delaware, you know, whatever. And then I qualify state tournament and, you know, and we won the state title my freshman year because I beat the number two guy in the state in the second round or whatever. And, and we won a state tournament by half a point. So I'll never forget that. And then my sophomore year, I didn't have a good year. Went to the state tournament. Then my high school coach looked at me and told me I need to go out for swimming. That was his way of motivating me a little bit, you know, because I was that kid. All right. I was like, all right, asshole, I'll prove you wrong. You know, and then, you know, and he was great, man. We called him, you know, he, he I talked to him this, to this day. And then um, junior year, I was I was rolling, you know, and, and I, I tore my neck before the state tournament, got third. And and then senior year, um, senior year, I lost in the finals to Jason Money, who was a multiple time national champion, junior college, and then went to Clarion and just a beast of Clarion. It was me and him all year. And then I went to college and I was a knucklehead in high school. Right. I had to go to junior college. So I went to Troy Steiner's. Troy Steiner's one of, he'll never, he'll never understand this, but the guy probably saved my life. He, he saved my life. He, he knew this, this guy named Jeff Schumacher. Jeff Schumacher, Shuey, was at Bismarck State College at the time. And Troy Steiner was like, hey, I got a junior college you can go to. It was in Bismarck State College. I was like, I'm there. I just packed my bags up and went, you know, and, and then I stayed there for a semester. Jeff Schumacher went to the University of North Dakota and took another job. So Brett Ma was the head coach there at the time. And Brett Ma was an awesome guy. I don't know if anybody knows Brett Ma, um, North Dakota State guy, awesome guy. Um, but me and my buddy, we, you know, there was like five guys on the team because Schumacher left and the program was in shambles and it wasn't Brett's fault. It was just, you know, coaching chain and things like that. So Jeff Schumacher knew Coach Canula here at NCCC really well. And then uh, Coach, and then he said, go to NCCC and then come back to North Dakota because I always liked North Dakota. I love North Dakota. And then um, I came to NCCC, wrestled, did well, and then – Charlie Cheney recruited me. Then he got fired before I got to Buffalo and then Jim Beekner. Then I just, and the coach at NCCC is Coach Canula. He said, you're going to go to Buffalo. I said, okay. And I just went there, you know, and then, you know, and it's been, it's been my home. It's been my, the, probably the most, it, it's just been my, I always considered it my home since, you know, so. And then I, and then I told, and Jim Beekner, I'll never forget this. Jim was awesome. I'll let you go on this one. Jim was awesome. So we're sitting in his office one day and he goes, what are you going to do when you get older? I said, I'm going to be a head wrestling coach. And he kind of chuckled a little bit. He probably won't remember this. He chuckled a little bit. He goes, where at? And I said, you be. You know, and, 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 what, and, and what Jim did here, man, it was, it was never, he just did an unbelievable job of just keeping this program strong and solid and a lot of respect for him. So, then here I am. John, I'm going to just, like, what I always said to Scott Goodell, the name I always brought up to Scott Goodell was Tom Tannis. The name I'm going to yep. bring up to you, Kyle Sermonera. What do they both yep. have in common? All-Americans. They First were All-Americans. They were both the program's last All-Americans for when he took over, from when Scott took over at Rutgers. And then the last All American yep. for Buffalo was Kyle Sermonera. And I always brought yep. that Sermon's up. Sermon's doing great. Yeah. And I always brought that up to him. But you're staying the course.
but I always brought that up to him. That's the name I always brought up to him. And he, and he would smile, but I think he was putting his teeth at the same time. You know? Right. Stay in the course is what you guys are going to do. And you're, I don't think you're going to change, but I think you're going to eventually get the results you want. Yeah, we're going to get the results. We're, we're going to get the results. I got a good group of kids right now. That, and I've always had a good group of kids. Um, but it's hard to be the first at a place, right? That, that's, uh, that's really hard to do. You know, and, and, and I just think we got good people around us. And we always had good people around us, but I think we got really good people around us. Uh, administratively, I think uh, Coach Ramos is awesome. Coach Oliver is great. Muhammad, Troy Kelly. We got really good people around us that, that want to see us be successful, and that's important. All right, Coach. I got my guys in watching some TV. I can hear yours are getting revved up. I'm sure Pax has got to go out and crash his bike into something or hit his head on something. So we walked in our garage the other day. There's like 10 dudes in our garage. I'm like, who are these kids? You know, so who, who were they? Who were they? Uh, I don't know. My, my wife yells at me because I'm like, he's six, right? I'm like, go ride your bike. So he rides around the neighborhood. I don't even know who the parents are or anything like that. I'm just like, that's how I grew up. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's normal. <laughs> you know, you know, so there, there's no the play kids? dates in the neighborhood kids. Who were the kids? Were they neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Yeah, neighborhood kid. But they're like eight, nine, ten years old. My kid's like six. I you know, like, yeah, whatever. I you know. Well, hey, uh, let me cut this live video. I'll talk to you off camera here real quick, man. Thanks for the time, all right? All right. All right, buddy. You're the man. Don't don't hang up on me, buddy. Just hang out. Okay.